Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Boxing Fundamentals. This is Boxing Fundamentals episode 2. And today we're going to be talking about the three planes of weight distribution and how these can help you with your counter punching. This video is going to feature the likes of Floyd Mayweather Jr., Guillermo Rigondeaux, Errol Spence Jr., and Felix Videjo. Of course, Errol Spence Jr. and Felix Videjo making their debut on my channel. I truly believe these two are going to be one of the greats in boxing and have big futures in boxing ahead of them. So, um, with that said, let's get straight to the video. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the three planes or the three axis positions that a fighter can adopt while in the ring. These planes refer to the three possible weight distributions that a fighter can actually have. And these are the forward, the neutral, and the backward or the back foot plane. Now, Guillermo Rigondeaux in the image is showing you an example of all three of these different axis positions. It's absolutely crucial for a fighter to be able to move from one of these to the next. So we're going to take a look at Guillermo Rigondeaux as he moves from these planes to the next. De Santiago, Cuba, Guillermo, el Chacal Rigondeau. So as I said previously, the three planes or axis positions are the three possible weight distributions you can have in boxing. Now the best boxers can fight from all three positions. Their spines are constantly in motion. So now we're going to watch Rigondia move from one plane to the next. And here you see Guillermo Rigondia in the forward plane. The weight is distributed more on the lead foot and the fighter appears closer to his opponent in this position. The forward lean axis is good for baiting an opponent to launch an attack and it is also good for standing your ground. So this is the forward plane. And once again, we see Guillermo Rigondeaux in the forward plane. Notice that his weight is mostly on his lead foot. And there you see Rigondeaux make Jose Barranza miss this jab by transitioning the weight to his back foot. And here we see Rigondeaux go from the forward position and then he sits down into the neutral plane. Now, by the name of the uh, neutral plane, you can tell that the weight is evenly distributed on both feet. This is the neutral plane. And now Rigondia shifts into the back axis position or the back foot plane. Now, by the name of this, you can tell that the weight is obviously distributed more towards the back foot of the fighter. So this is obviously a more defensive stance. So now we're going to pay attention to how shifting your weight can actually open up counter-punching opportunities as Rigon Diaz demonstrates against Jose Barranza. So now pay close attention to how Rigon Diaz is going to put the weight on his lead foot. He's going to go into the forward axis position and this is going to bait Jose Barranza to come in with this jab and Rigon Diaz pulls back. So Jose Barranza completely loses his balance due to the weight shift by Guillermo Rigon Diaz. Beranza is wide open for just about anything Rigondeaux could possibly throw and he's in a highly vulnerable position. Rigondeaux simply shifts the weight to his back foot. Beautiful technique. This is Rigondeaux's fight. And Rigondeaux's... So now we see Rigondeaux once again move into the back foot plane. And of course this is a more defensive position. Now in this position you see more defensive fighters take this position because from here you are at less risk from the jab or the straight right hand. However, your main concern should be that your opponent does not actually get on the outside of your lead foot. Notice that Rigonial's head tilts into the direction of the foot which he puts the most weight on. And you can actually get up and try this yourself. Your head naturally tilts to the foot with the most weight. Now, keeping your opponent at bay with the jab or the lead hand and being ready to counter with the power hand is absolutely crucial when you're in this position. Um, because fighting off of the back foot axis usually limits what you can do offensively. So it's very wise to use an active jab from this position and be ready to counter with your power hand and also be ready to adjust your position in case your opponent steps outside your lead. Jab and his jab hand is winning the fight for him. Good thing set up. So here we see Floyd Money Mayweather shift most of his weight to his lead foot and this will bait Victor Ortiz to actually shoot the jab now, once again, the front foot axis position often prompts your opponent's offense. And in some cases, this is even just a reflex action. So we're going to see Ortiz shoot the jab. 
and then you see Mayweather shifting his weight to his back foot, and by doing so, Mayweather is able to pull from the jab. And then when they're in the center of the ring, the Mayweather lead right is a spectacular weapon, and it was there in that situation. Okay, so now we're going to talk about counterpunching of the back foot axis, also known as basically leaning back and countering. Now that you have a clear idea of the three different weight distribution planes, let us now take a quick look at counterpunching of the back foot axis position, commonly referred to as I just said as leaning back and countering. I'm going to see examples from Errol Spence and Felix Fidejo as well as Floyd Mayweather. James De La Rosa is a guy, yeah, he's packed. De La Rosa, people said, keeps his shots short, compact, and he's sneaking it. So here we see Errol Spence Jr. flash his lead hand, and this, of course, draws Brandon Hoskins forward. And then we see Errol Spence lean back, shifting his weight to his back foot. And of course, leaning back is all it takes to actually make Brandon Hoskins miss this jab. And of course, he's already committed and he can now be countered by Errol Spence Jr. And there you see the, the right hook counter from Errol Spence. Beautiful technique. Great boxing. And you saw the straight left hand. And once again, Errol Spence leans back to make Bolanos overextend himself into counterpunching range. This is one of the most skillful ways of counterpunching because you remain stationary but you make your opponent miss and you're still in range to actually counter at the same time. So this is advanced counterpunching. There you see the counter. So we see Floyd Money Mayweather feint the jab, which draws the counter right hook from Shamba Mitchell, who of course is a southpaw. And Floyd makes Mitchell miss by leaning back while stepping away from the punch. As you can see, one of the greatest counterpunchers of all time fully understands that you can create openings by simply shifting your weight and stepping back. Great counterpunching. And then we're going to see him counter with that left hook over the top. So let's take a look at what happens here. You see Felix Videjo shoot his jab and Sergio Villanueva aims to counter this jab. And of course the jab draws the aggression and he comes in and Felix Videjo simply leans back once again shifting his weight to his back foot and makes Villanueva fall in. And of course as Sergio Villanueva comes falling in with his chin up in the air like an early Christmas gift, he presents himself an easy counterpunching target for Felix Videjo. And there you see Sergio Villanueva pay for his mistake by taking a clean left hook to the jaw. So just to summarize this video, great fighters will shift their weight constantly during a fight, just like you saw Guillermo Rigondeau doing in the beginning of this video. And the best boxers understand and utilize the three planes or axis positions during a fight, that is the forward, the neutral, and the back foot axis positions. Shifting your weight can unlock counter-punching opportunities. And finally, when you combine the ability to faint, bait your opponent, shift your weight and step back from a punch, you have the makings of a great counter puncher. All right, guys, that's all I've got time for with this video. I hope you enjoyed the second episode of Boxing Fundamentals. I hope you guys can see what I'm actually doing here. So whenever you see a video which is about Boxing Fundamentals, then I'm going to be a bit more technical. I'm going to go a bit deeper into the actual um, techniques of boxing. And it, it isn't so much about the fighters themselves, but more about the actual techniques that are being displayed. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe, as always. I'm always interested in your feedback. With that said, on to the next one. Panthers working that jab. Junior. Damon Charles, opening rounds, good for 10. Nice left hand, knocks down Charles. It's a body shot. Caos en cuando ha peleado tres episodios y Villanueva ocho no caos. Esto se acabó, señoras y señores. Me parece que va a ser muy complicado que pueda recuperarse. Nigga, try me, try me. I'ma get this whole motherfucking family. And I ain't playing with nobody. Fuck around and I'ma catch the body. Let a nigga try me, try me. I'ma get this whole motherfucking family.